the Gold Prospecting Experience. How to improve your gold finding. Thanks again, everyone. You guys are great. It's been fun to read your questions and comments. Yes, even the tough ones. After all, that's when we really learn. Let's look at what we've been discussing so far. We're looking at what it's like to find more gold faster. Gold finding is an experience like no other, except maybe platinum finding, but that's another story we'll talk about later. What we've just seen is that by deploying a few key prospecting concepts, we can get into the pastries a lot faster. Hi, I'm Prospector Jess from Hunting for Gold. Welcome to our growing community of gold prospectors worldwide. Tens of thousands of us at this point and growing fast. Let's look at an example from real prospecting experience. Like some of that stuff? Using what you learned about gold traps from my last video, look at this example. Here's a great little sample site sitting under the lip of a pair of boulder traps. You see the boulder there on the left side has already been moved aside, but the other one is still sitting there where we're digging underneath. Both of these boulder traps revealed something very interesting I'll show you in a second. But for now you can see the structure very similar to what we talked about. The flood, when it's going in raging mode, runs right down the middle from the front of this picture over the top. So go up the screen, if you will and see where all those cobbles and boulders are trapped underneath the sieve and shovel? Those things are just a trail of the evidence you're looking for for that flow. Here's a map of the sample location. Specific details, of course, were omitted to protect the gold. So looking at the flow, the entry point has a jet of water that during flood rage is screaming across and slams into the bedrock wall on the opposite side and turns a corner at almost 45 degrees actually almost 135 degrees. It's turning back on itself. In the process, it exits across Boulder 3 and Boulder 4, which were the two areas we showed in that picture. Gold samples were taken in each, and I'll show you what we found. But the real question is, based on what was found there, what would you do in that question mark area between Boulder 1 and Boulder 2, and down the stream to Boulder 5? What is this telling you about this site? Start using what we're teaching to think about how to look at a gold prospecting site. That's what this is all about. The flood reach goes all the way out to those dashed lines you see, and that indicates that this thing has a great reach. But notice the top part there was scoured flat. There's nothing trapped up there. It's just a solid piece of bedrock above the wall because that's what it is. Down below with the boulders and all that stuff, all kinds of cracks and fractures are evident, as well as a pavement of cobbles right down below in that low flow zone between boulder three and boulder one, boulder two and boulder two. Okay. Here's the gold we recovered from that small amount of samples, those two zones, basically a couple of buckets of material. Oh, no kidding. Is that fun? What do you think that means for the gold finding potential of the rest of that site? If it was you, what will you do next? That's the question. Let's look at a few more of your hunting for gold questions and answers. Question one, how do I find gold near me? That's a good question and that is a very common one that comes up time and time again. Basically, what you need to find is some sort of mapping system or some friends who know where gold was found before. That's your most likely place to find gold again. And then start from there and move away and take heed to the things I'm telling you about how water flow works to move gold and what'll happen in a stream bed to concentrate gold that comes from those locations it was found before because it will tend to move downstream with time. Question answer number two. Where do I look for gold first? That's another good one. This one specifically referred to those who were looking at their site and they decided where they wanted to look, but they want to know where they start digging. How do I look at those spots and know that there's going to be a good place to sample? Well, that's an important determination because that defines the amount of work a given site presents. So you want to know how water flow interacts what are the clues that you're looking at? What kind of trash things are you seeing? What kinds of rocks and boulders? What kinds of geology and topology are playing a role in where the gold goes? Based on those things, you can make a determination of places that look good, and more often than not, places that look bad. What you want to do is tend to trend toward those places that look good, places that will likely concentrate gold, such as the gold trap we showed earlier. Places that will have evidence of gold. Work your way from those toward places that are less likely, 
in an orderly fashion and basically map it out to produce a pastry map. I'll talk about this later. Question and answer number three. Is there anything special to look for about the rocks? Yes, there is. Geology plays a big role in the clues that you look at to find gold. So one of the things you want to know about is what rocks and minerals are evidence of and what are basically what we call lever right or lever right there. There's a difference and it can be learned. You want to basically look at things that have to do with iron and ultramafic intrusions. And these are things that leave special kinds of markers throughout the area. And you'll see it in the stream beds, you'll see it on the sides of the roads, you'll see it in the kinds of minerals that go with the quartz intrusions, they won't be white, that's a big hint. And so you're going to find out that there's things that you can learn, again, that will show you more clues. It's very important to understand the rocks and minerals that go with gold, because when you know what they look like and what they're made out of, you know specific clues or specific telltales that will give you indication for where gold is and where it is not. Those are special and they're very important and they can be learned easily. So what is the gold finding experience like? Hmm, remind you of something? When you find gold, there's a tendency to really lose your head. And the reason is quite simple, it's gorgeous. What you wanna know is how to keep your head on so that you can objectively move from step to step, whether you're finding gold or not because it's almost as important when you're not finding gold to know when to stay the course or when to move on. And that's all very important and plays a role in how much gold you stand a chance of recovering. To increase it, you need to know specifics around how to decide whether or not it's good to continue or quit and go to the next most likely spot. How have you experienced finding gold yourself? Let me know. What things would make that experience even better for you? What if you could increase the gold you find? I have a new DVD training aimed at getting that increase fast. Watch for my next video where I'll give you details about what's in that training and how to get access to the information. Important, this video has some time limitations, so open it and view it as soon as you can to avoid being left out. Again, I want to thank you for joining the Hunting for Gold community Good prospecting, Prospector Jess, over and out.